Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is October the 2nd. It's Monday. It's time for our daily devotions. And I'm Deaconess Intern Claire. And we're doing the early evening devotion, which is found in Lutheran Service Book on page 297. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory. Of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. All right, and our devotion today continues in the Gospel of Matthew. We are in chapter 7. We're doing the first 12 verses. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. All right, so Matthew 7 is falling in sort of the latter half of the middle portion of the Sermon on the Mount, which began with the Beatitudes back in chapter 5. And that's when Jesus takes the disciples up the mountain. He's there, the crowds are around, but he's turning to the disciples and he's saying these things to the disciples. And this is very reminiscent of what we hear about with Moses being taught by God in the book of Exodus, where he goes up the mountain and he's given the Ten Commandments and the, and the other things, that God does these, these teachings on mountaintops. And there's a significance to that. Uh, you know, the significance of the Ten Commandments and now the Beatitudes and, and the other things that are following. So uh, we begin with the, the blessing of the Beatitudes that is given to the disciples as they're about to be sent out into the world. And uh, that follow, follows within this notion that they are the salt and light of, of the earth, that this is how Jesus uh, describes them. Um, then he goes in and he talks about, after that, just different aspects of the law itself. Different teachings on, on morality and on, on guidance. Um, he talks about murder and, and how to treat your brother. Um, adultery in the Sixth Commandment. Uh, divorce. Uh, taking oaths. Love for enemies. Justice. And then in chapter 6, he moves into specific disciplines and uh, practices that are found among, uh, that are, are to be found among the disciples, like giving to the needy, uh, fasting, prayer. This is where we get the Lord's Prayer. Uh, treasures in heaven, not worrying, not having anxiety. And then finally, we come here to chapter 7, where we talk about um, not judging others. And so this is sort of a, a thing where we're called to see ourselves rightly. So we've moved from the, the blessing of the Beatitudes to, to the calling, to the disciplines of, of charity and mercy. And uh, all of this really is a reflection of our relationship with Jesus, that, that because we have this relationship with Jesus, we exhibit these qualities as um, the marks of discipleship, as uh, the things that flow forth from us as, uh, as believers in Jesus. And then, of course, he moves into 
um, seeking of the Lord those things that are right, those things that um, our hearts know to ask for because we have the Holy Spirit who lives in us, um, who teaches us how to pray. And then tomorrow uh, we will conclude with some exhortations uh, about watching out for falsehoods and heresies um, because this is always an important aspect of our faith, one that is not always talked about a great deal in many of the churches today, but we have to be able to identify those threats to our faith that, that uh, surface in terms of teachings that are counterfeit or false or misleading. And, and usually the worst of teachings are, are not obvious, but, but rather they are, they're subtly different than uh, the true teachings of the faith. Uh, and this was uh, really what we talked about some weeks ago when we were going into the Pauline epistles and talking about uh, the heresies of, of, of Judaizing and Gnosticism and some of those um, early Christian heresies that did have some flavor of Christianity mixed into them, but yet also had other things that really destroyed the gospel and made people think that they had to do certain works to, uh, in part, earn their salvation from God. So Jesus is preparing his disciples today to send them out into the world. Um, he is uh, providing them with a blessing. He's talking about their calling and talking about the, the marks of discipleship that will accompany their lives in the faith. And then, like I said, tomorrow we'll be talking about um, proclaiming the truth versus being mixed up into error. And of course, the truth of the Gospels is that Jesus gave his life to die for our sin, and that by believing in him, we have eternal life. And it is only through his sacrifice on the cross that we have a renewed and restored relationship with God. All right, we continue back in Lutheran service book on page 297, and we're going to continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Amen. All right, well, Claire, what announcements do you have for us today? Um, well, we have Ladies Bible Study tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Um, on Wednesday, we will have Youth Night at 6. Thursday, Mahjong at 10. But there is no grief share on Thursday. It will resume on the 12th of October. All right. And then tonight, we have Pastor's Class resuming at its time at 7 o'clock. And then tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we have a Board of Education meeting at 7 o'clock. Uh, maybe a little bit after, but, but come at 7 this coming Saturday, we have our men's breakfast and elders meetings happening at 8.15 and 9.30 a.m. respectively. And then we look forward to seeing you uh, for worship this coming Sunday. That's all the announcements we have. Thank you for watching. God bless the rest of your day.